Welcome to The Culture Edit, unique perspectives into the personal and professional lives of individuals at the helm of successful business, athletics, art, and design. Welcome to The Culture Edit, episode 17. We are coming at you live from our house. I am currently sitting on the couch. We're not actually live, though. You realize that? Oh, yeah. Like if it was live, okay, that'd okay, be like okay. radio. Okay, let me start over. Let me start. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. And uh, apologize because tomorrow will be Tuesday. I mean, I there's a possibility <clears throat> I could still get it out tonight. Wow, but I think we were gonna try and pretend like we are doing this because of the holiday, because it's Columbus Day. That ba- good old bank holiday. Uh, a good old bank through. holiday. So when a holiday falls on a Monday, normally we would release on Tuesday instead of our normal. You say normally, but I don't think this has happened yet. The reality is, we were in New York over the weekend. And celebrating I, your birthday month. Celebrating my birthday. Well, we had to go to Norwalk, Connecticut for work last yeah. week. Yeah. On Wednesday on through Wednesday. Friday. Yeah. And so then we and we had meetings in New York on Friday. Yep. So we're like, let's just go ahead and stay through the weekend. I lugged the equipment. All the way up. All the way to New York. We checked bags because of the equipment. Yep. And uh, normally we wouldn't do that. We never recorded. Now we're back. I, I just took a, you know, I just took all our equipment for a little ride. Well, you know, <clears throat> to, we we were being ambitious, but I think it's okay to not record every Sunday, um, if if birthday celebrations are in order, because we ended up. Well, we were supposed to record on Sunday, but then it worked out to where we could meet up with friends on Sunday. Yeah. Um, and so that became the the priority. To yeah. be Completely honest. Megan and Umi, you're the priority. Yeah. Shout out. Cafe, well, they, cafe, I mean, Mogador. they hopped on the subway, came over from Brooklyn. I mean, that's not oh, yeah, easy. That's, that's not an easy trip. Yeah, no, it's big, and big effort. Braving the subway nowadays is, I mean, they basically risk their lives for us. We were talking about this, though, with them. Like, every single time we've gone to New York, they make an effort. Yeah, not many people time. do that. Yeah. But they always make an effort. Good yeah. friends. Yeah, great friends. Yeah, so I think before, I know you want to talk about New York, but before we do that, um, feedback lot from last week mm-hmm. again linda's episode so much incredible positive feedback about her and the interview and how in the world does she get everything done inspiration motivation yeah all the i'm inspired but, but i feel like a loser because i don't get enough done <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was just me <laughs> uh but yeah i mean it, it was incredible and, and we knew it would be we knew that uh, she was going to be incredibly authentic and i think people we knew because we know her story. We knew that they'd be inspired by it. So, Linda, I know you're listening. A lot of people were totally inspired uh, by hearing your story, and thank you so much for sharing that. And thanks for all the feedback. Although we still haven't heard from our Melbourne listeners, which I'm Who really getting annoyed by. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you, Melbourne? Do you want to give a 150th injury update? <laughs> Week five is complete. Um, obviously, I'm traveling. Uh, I would say my collarbone is 80 to 90%, would you say? And then, but my elbow is a problem. I, I still can't bend my elbow. So that's what's keeping me straight. Straighten your elbow. Straighten. I can bend my, it's stuck in a bent position, basically. Thanks for everyone you to ask. Uh, speaking of injuries and cycling, do we want to talk about the Bearings uh, Bike Works barbecue? That we went to because that was really fun. Yeah, actually. I guess because last week we recorded before we went. Yeah. And that was a great event. It was their fundraising, annual fundraising event. We barbecue. didn't really know how big it was going to be. No. Like It was actually like a live auction, a silent auction. Um, there was tons of people there. It was in a great venue. It was decorated really nice. The food was amazing. I mean, it was barbecue, but it was really good barbecue. Lots of friends there. Becky and Tim, thanks for not only inviting us, but thanks for putting on a first class event. I think that was incredibly successful. I forgot how much they said they raised that night. It was like $140,000, I yeah. think. Uh, so incredibly successful night for them. They're, I would say probably every bike rider in Atlanta, it's their favorite charity. Uh, they do amazing sure. work. Um, we could probably spend a whole episode. I mean, we've talked about Well, we'll that. put a link to their website in the show notes. <clears throat> that way you can go and check out Bearings and all the great work they're doing with kids in the community. Um, but it's all about getting more kids, not only on bikes, but giving kids a way to earn bikes through working. And so they work in the bike shop or they work in, um, different, they have different programs that the kids can spend time either working or volunteering, or, um, they have summer programs and now they actually have a mountain bike team. Uh, but it's, it's a really great organization. 
So we we were there with several friends, including friend of the pod, John Trainer, episode eight, who I got to sit by, and then Chip. Episode nine. Oh, sorry. Episode nine was John, with John Trainer. Uh, and then Chip from Wahoo was also there along with Scott DeMeyer. And there was a, uh, I, I'm sure you want to mention their, what the, the primary thing they were doing was an auction, right? So they're auctioning off items that had been donated to bearings. One of which was a Wahoo kicker bike. The live auction got spicy. <clears throat> it got spicy at our table. Yeah. It was like, it was a bidding war at our table, but who the bidding war was between is probably <laughs> one of the funniest things I've ever watched. At a live auction. So are you going to elaborate? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, I'm just giving like a dramatic pause. Oh, okay. Uh, so the bidding war happened between Chip, <laughs> the founder of Wahoo. Yeah. And Chad. And me. Yeah. So they were bidding back and forth for like for a kind wa- of an uncomfortable amount of time of like, okay, how long are they going to do this for? <laughs> like they both can literally just go buy this thing tomorrow. For a Wahoo kicker bike. That for was the a- irony. So yeah. the the item was a Wahoo kicker bike, yeah. and me and Chip were the only ones bidding. Well, I guess other no, people, not the only ones, other people had bid on it, but then they gave up. When it got to the upper limit of people's comfortability of bidding, the two of you were just half wheeling each other <laughs> into bidding oblivion. Yeah, but you didn't even know I was going to bid on it. I think you were kind of surprised by the whole thing. I, like, I what is more, going on? I was here? more and more anxious. I was like, how high is this? Like, he's, <laughs> all right, we're now losing money on this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's for a good cause. Um, but you did lose. I gave up. Um, you gave up. I you could lost. T- I could see it in Chip's eyes. He was not going to lose. He was going to win the kicker bike. That he has access to. Yes. At all times. <laughs> so it's like but you know it's for a good cause one of those things like when you see a a, you know a a worthy opponent and you see it in their eyes that they just got a little bit more fire back there than you you're willing to put out then you just you give them you let let them let them have it i let them have it so yeah so chip i hope you're enjoying your kicker bike chip walked away with (laughs) his own product (laughs) Uh, and maybe one day we'll get a kicker bike um but not not today we're getting a move well, yeah, Michael's move. currently on the way over it's on the, the way. move, so he might interrupt this broadcast to bring you yeah. Michael Garrison in the move. So hopefully we'll have a full review on the move um, by next episode is my my goal. Uh, well, do we want to talk talk about uh, our trip to New York? Because I think uh, that was pretty much the highlight of the week. Yeah, for sure. Um, so <clears throat> we get into Norwalk, Connecticut, which I've never been to Connecticut, period. Check that box. Check that box. Um, went to Norwalk. Went to our clients' offices, lovely offices in Norwalk. Beautiful. Um, that was yeah. We flew in Wednesday night. The meetings were on Thursday. So many nice people. So many nice people. Yeah. Lovely, lovely people. The Genuinely Kinetic- care. Connecticutans. Connecticuticans. I think so. Is that yeah? Yeah. Um, Didn't make fun of our accents. They were really, really no, nice. No, everyone was lovely. Yeah. Um, and so enjoyed that. Had a great day of focus groups, chatting, and then took the train from Connecticut to South Norwalk train into Grand Central, which... Like a true commuter. Yeah. So like that was kind of cool. Although I, there was definitely points where I was like, doing this every day would be very depressing. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was good. We got there in about an hour and a half. Uh, arrived at Grand Central. It was completely overwhelming. But I had actually I don't think I've been in Grand. Maybe when I was a little kid. Yeah. We went in Grand Central, but not in my adult time. So that was pretty cool. So I had to take you into yeah, the yeah, yeah that we yeah. were in the middle. Like that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. Where um, all the lug, movies you know, are shot. Yeah, we yeah. were lugging our bags uh, around. So that was a little damper. And mine was real activities. heavy because it was full recording equipment. Yeah. Um, but made it to our hotel. We we're staying basically between like. West Village and Soho kind of area. It was a great spot. So first stop, I took Chad to Shuka, which is right next to the hotel we were staying in. And actually, Joanna and I went last time, had a great time, loved it so much. So I was like, you know what? Taking Chad back here. Another great meal. Um, I, it's the Del Bar of Manhattan. So we we go to Del Let, Bar every let's week. Not get cr- <laughs> it's not as good as Del Bar, but... It's, it was good. Uh, it's but good. But. It, the vibe's not as good uh, as Del Bar... But I just love the the restaurant we go to every single week here. It's the first thing we do in New York is go to a restaurant that's just exactly like it. Yeah, I mean, it's Persian food, just classic. It's really good. Um, yeah, and we had, you know, the same server that we had last time, which was kind of strange. Um, so that was really fun. Then I had f- stumbled a- across a place that I saw, I think on TikTok or I, I don't know, and called Arthur's Tavern. That Hi- was like Highlight of the trip. Yeah, that actually ended up being the highlight of the trip, and it was the only thing I didn't 
have a reservation for, or, like actually plan for. And so it's this old tavern. It's been there for, I don't know, a really long time. And we walk up and it's packed. And I'm like, oh man, we're not going to get like a spot. But it's, it's a jazz show. It's a, it's a jazz bar. Yeah. So it's not like tavern, like. What is a tavern? I mean, it's a jazz. Ta- yeah, it's a jazz. It's a jazz tavern. Yeah, jazz tavern. Um, so Arthur's Tavern, the Jazz Tavern. <laughs> uh, but we walk up and we walked right in and we we're like, hey, we don't have a reservation, but you know, we'd love to sit down and listen to some music. The bartender was so nice. He's like, of course, like come sit right over here and in a reserved table. Yeah, at a reserved table, sat the us only right one down, left. <laughs> brought yeah, the only table left in the entire place. Um, it was pretty awesome. And then we ended up staying there for like three hours. We saw two or three different bands. Yeah. Uh it was rowdy it was fun the drinks were good uh great service great service i you mentored a young impressionable uh musician yeah met a nice young lady um she was going to be a backup singer at the bowery ballroom the following night with a band uh and you know after a few drinks you're like bestowing my drunk wisdom upon her yeah which was basically just like don't let men ruin your life and you'll be fine (laughs) Nikki's normal <laughs> advice. <laughs> you, follow your dreams. Like, follow your dreams and don't let men ruin your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was my advice. No, I think it was a little more, maybe probably better than that. But um, yeah, it was good. Maybe. It was fun. Uh, so that was a, a really fun start out to the night. Yeah, so Friday. After in, meetings. Yeah, Friday in between meetings, we went to Balthazar, which is actually like kind of a staple for us. We really like it. Um, Keith McNally restaurant. Yeah, it's a French brasserie. So you walk in. We were thinking, oh, Friday. It was a late lunch. It was like 2 p.m. Yeah. We're thinking, oh, we're just going to walk right in. Nope. Packed. Yep. You would have thought this was the only place in Manhattan on a Friday at 2. Yeah. It was insane. But, you know, that's what we go there for. We go there for the vibes and we go there for the food. And it was amazing, as usual. 2 o'clock on a Friday, packed, and everyone's eating a hamburger and drinking a martini. It was it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, so then... We didn't have a martini, just pointing that out. Everyone else was. Oh, yeah. yeah. So get some work done the rest of the day. After that, I decided to take Chad to my other favorite spot that we talked about before, and that's Scent Bar, because I wanted to help him pick out a cologne for himself. So many people are going to be excited about this, that I went to Scent Bar. Was it everything you dreamed of? Um, give me, give me. It was take. overwhelming. Um, <laughs> Which I warned. I said it's overwhelming. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. I can't really smell that well or see that well, so my senses are kind of dulled. Um, so you walk in and it's just like uh, like so many scents. Like yeah, I guess that's what's called scent bar. And uh, things you've never seen before. Never. Like you don't see anything you recognize. I I, I didn't realize it was going to be all these weird brands like i thought i don't know niche yeah i thought it was more like the other places you've taken me where you make your own like they have all the different uh scents top notes and high notes and low notes and all that stuff and then like you kind of tell them what you want and then they'll make you something i didn't realize it was brands but it was like they were categorized like leather and oud and gourmand i I didn't know floral oud is o-u-d yeah it's a tree yeah See, I learned that. And it's a difficult, it's a very difficult <clears throat> source. Yeah. So you just told him kind of what you liked, and he pulled $500 bottle of perfume down. <laughs> he and did said, go Here straight go. to the $500 <laughs> bottle, which I was like, All right. And you called him out, and you're like, Of course, you just pulled the uh, most expensive thing out. And like, yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm a straight my first shooter. Radio. So I was like, As much as I would, you know, love it, mainly because I had just gotten done saying that you can't really smell anything, and this perfume is basically for me. So that I like it when I smell you. Yeah. Um, and then to like right off the bat pull the the five hundred dollar bottle out, I was like, okay, bro. Yeah. Let's start. Let's start this. Let's start over. So what did you get me? What was it called again? So we ended up getting. Oh, I can't even say this. Like you can't pronounce Le it. In the well, I, I'm gonna butcher this as all as my usual French pronunciation is not great, but mm-hmm. something along the lines of les indemnable. Okay. Indemnable. Eloquent. In the Madabwe. There you okay. go. Uh, anyways. What uh, What is the smell? What was the base smell again? Well, it's Amber Supreme. So very oh. ambery, oud, um, woody, saffron. I believe there's notes of saffron, um, vanilla. Uh, it's actually a brand from the French Alps. And it says that it's a collection of original, unconventional fragrances committed to fulfilling the desires of lovers of rare perfumes. 
Wow. Made in the Alps. I, I will say, because um, the next day I wore it, but I did like a normal like two sprays. Yeah. No, it's strong. It was like way too strong. It's a it's a one spritzer. Yeah. Yeah. It was re- it's really, really strong. And I noticed it lasts a really long time. Yeah, I mean it's a perfume. Like it's a it's a perfume which is not a cologne. What's the difference? A perfume is much stronger than a cologne. Hmm. Makes sense. That's the difference. Um, but then there's like a Ude toilette, which is like even lighter. Okay. So that's the one I got. It's more of like a just a lighter sp- kind of body spray versus a perfume, which is much more. Yeah. So potent. for our listeners out there, if you picked up on that, Nikki's one of these. Uh, I'm getting you a. Uh, I'm getting you a present about getting me one too. One for you, one for me. Yeah, like one for you, one for me. You didn't mention that part when we were walking in. I mean, that's just the way life works. Oh, okay. One for you, one for me. Um, but it, I've never heard of this brand. So when he pulled it out, I it was something new for me. Um, and then I got a actually a perfume from London. So not French perfume, but Penhaligon's and Halligans. Hmm, okay. It's their perfume Luna. I've actually been testing it for a few months. I ordered testers of a few different of their perfumes. Um, and the one, the Luna one, I really, it's, it's, it's very light and floral. I like it. Cool. So now when everyone knows why it smells so good now, they'll know. Exactly. Yeah. But just one little spritz. You don't one, need to be walking around like you're a Cipollini. Yeah. Cipollini. I imagine yeah. he walks around with like 20 De- sprays of definitely of cologne. Yeah. Perfume. Yeah, definitely. So after the perfume shopping, for Chad yeah, so after and perfume Nikki. shopping, we were supposed to go to Dirty French, but we walked over earlier to the Ludlow and had a drink at their bar. Um, and which then is it the was kind of one of those, what? Which is the Dirty French bar. Yeah, which is the Dirty French bar and great drinks. They're actually setting up for a wedding, yeah. which was cute. I saw the bride, she looked beautiful. And, but by the time we like would get back to the hotel and then back over, it was just a lot of like Uber walking time. And we've eaten there a lot. This is a client we should mention. So. Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. a client of ours. We've eaten there quite a bit. A so lot. we ended up, staying closer to the hotel and going to a place which has been on a, our list for a while, but we haven't ever been because we haven't gotten reservations. It's called Dante's. Uh, and we actually walked right up and they had two seats left. We got, we've been getting really, really lucky on this trip. Really lucky. Yeah. Um, it's a very popular place. Yeah. But it was like Italian. Um, we both got pasta. You got food envoy. envy. I had for food envy for the first time. Yeah. Normally I draw the good straw of the, the food. Like I always get the best thing no matter what. Yeah. And Chad's always envious of my food, but this time he won. I did. He got the the fruit of the sea. Fruit of the sea with I don't remember what the noodle was, but it was awesome. I think it was just spaghetti. Maybe, yeah. But it looked amazing, or maybe it was linguine. Anyways, it was a red sauce. It looked amazing. Yeah. Light red sauce. All of the the shrimps and shellfish and accoutrements you could you could ask for. Yeah. Um, I got the pesto. Well, it it was described as like a pasta limon, and I really like. The, the lemon pasta type dish but it was actually more of a pesto-y dish and i'm not like i i like pesto but it's not my favorite thing so while mine was amazing if you're a pesto lover it's to die for if you're not obsessed with pesto i wouldn't say that it's your dish yeah but overall was a phenomenal experience uh would definitely go back there and that was an early night yeah that one i, I made us go to bed day. early because yeah. i well, you want to get your run in the next morning. Yes, because I had woken up actually before our client meeting at 5 a.m. And I went down to the hotel gym and they had like one rickety treadmill that worked, but barely. And I did my work, my run run workout Thursday morning, which was like a sprints and intervals and stuff. And so I knew I had to get at least one run, kind of like tempo run in while we were there. So woke up early Saturday morning, went down to the Hudson River Park like that greenway. Yeah. And went running along there. You're inspired by your new bandit clothing. I had my new bandit running clothes on. Your new so favorite like, running brand. I felt like I was a local. Yeah. Because they're they're based out of Brooklyn. Straight out of Brooklyn. Uh, then we went to, well, we were supposed to go to the Museum of Natural History. I had bought tickets for it. We, um, we know we did go to it. Well, what, yeah, we tried. But when we got there, with, it was raining. With, so not only did I get up and run early in the morning, but I actually ran in the rain the entire time. Yeah. So we went to the Museum of Natural History with 50,000 German tourists. It was insane. Yeah. We got on the subway thinking like, oh, we'll just hop on the subway. We'll get there. It's we, we, I got the 10 a.m. spot so that we'd be like the first in line. Yeah. It was all planned. Like you have the ticket for the time. Exactly. I'm like 10 a.m. right when they open, we'll be there. That way, you know, no risk. We get on the subway, really no one on the subway until we <laughs> uh, get no to we like, started. until we get to Midtown. 
Yeah. And then it was like the entire country of Germany had just dumped all of their patrons into the subway in Midtown and everyone, everyone was wearing Adidas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You pointed that out. And they were all going to see the dinosaurs. Yep. <laughs> Every single person had Adidas shoes on. We get off the train. I'm like, oh, please tell me all these people aren't going to the Natural Hi History Museum because at this point, we're we're like the sardines packed at the bottom of the can Yeah. because we got on first. And the, the Germans are like leaning up against our bodies, crushing us. No, no spatial awareness. Not a lot of, well, but no one really had a choice. It was, yep. I mean, the subway was packed. So, of course, we're the last ones to get off because... Or the first one's on and everyone goes straight to the line to the, natural history. well the line was already three blocks deep it was insane it, i've never seen anything I, like it i was we were like so shocked by it so the line was like around the natural history museum down down a block yeah. and down another block yeah it was crazy there was just gaps for the road well, but you're we still were, standing in line yeah and we were confused like is <clears throat> this to get a ticket or is this like, what's happening? Because I already I bought these tickets like two weeks before. And they're like, no, this is just a security line. <laughs> so everyone insane. that knows us knows we don't wait in line. So we didn't go. Yeah, we didn't go. It was kind of sad. But I just was like, I, it was raining. So we we're going to stand there. We didn't have umbrellas. We we're going to have to stand in the rain down three blocks Yeah. to get into this museum. It just wasn't happening. So um, we went and got bagels and schmear and bought umbrellas. Yeah, so we went and got a bagel instead. Yeah. Because it, but we saved the day. We did. By walking through the park. Yep. To the Met. We'd never, neither one of us has ever been to the Met. Yeah. And Metro, I think it ended Metro, up. Metropolitan Museum of yeah. Modern Art. It was, yeah. it was amazing. Um, and we got, so the, the luck flipped in our favor of we walked up and we we're like, okay, we don't even have tickets yet, but we're, we're just going to get through security and figure it out once we get in there. As soon as we walk up, there's a, one line to the right and one line to the left. And they're, they're siphoning everyone into the security and to the right, which is more visible. Mm-hmm from most people are coming from that way it's visible to the park the line the was line's like, three blocks long and i'm like just oh, like the my gosh, other museum the? yeah i was just like what the heck like what is happening and then we look to the left and as soon as we look to the left they open up a new security line yep we we're just standing and we walk and we we're just standing there <laughs> and we just so walked right in <laughs> we just walked right in uh and it was amazing and then we got tickets as we were inside, right on the phone, scanned them. And we great. were both blown away. It was one of my favorite museums of our, I've ever been to. The, so. I mean, we hardly touched it in terms of like being able to experience it all. But they had a really cool thing on their website where they give you different tour options. So we were following, trying to follow those. As yeah, best as we yeah could. we chose like the hour long tour of, it basically gives you directions. We were probably there for two hours, I would say, because we kind of went off path. I think we're almost three because we oh, would do our own thing yeah. we would follow the tour but then we're doing our own thing but i mean it's like monet it's Picasso, van gogh picasso van gogh. i mean everything every everything like rodin yeah like it was like i mean it was kind of like a mini louvre honestly uh, yeah i mean but it wasn't it, that many there's more hits i would say in a shorter amount of time than you would get in the louvre for sure like yeah because you it's see like a lot hit of after hit you see a lot of stuff in the Louvre that you have no idea. Like, unless you're an art history, like true art history buff, you're really not going to know like who this person is, what they've done, what their life story is, why they created this like statue um, or painting. But when you go to the Met, you you know you know enough. The average person that went through grade school is like, I got it. You've seen them all. Seen the lily You've pads. You've seen pictures of them. Exactly. Yeah, lily pads and the Van Gogh self portrait and like the Drake of museums. Yeah, but just my, hit after hit. My, I was wondering where you're going with the Drake because <laughs> my mind went to the Seinfeld episode where they talk about the Drake. Oh. Yeah, but anyway, she didn't go there. Uh -huh. Um. So no, the Drake. But what of I museums. like to do is going through museums. Is I like to look <laughs> at who has donated or brought this piece of artwork to the museum. Yeah, that's all you talked about. Because it's fascinating. It says every single family like uh, fund or, you know, society that has donated this piece of art or is gifted or lend this piece of art to the museum. And all it makes you realize is like how there's just a like very few amounts of ridiculously rich people that have just literally collected and amassed an insane amount of art over time because it's the same families. Mm -hmm. Like it, 25% of the museum is the is like the louder family. And then you go and you see all these other rich families, which when you see the names, like you write, like the Heinz family, you start recognizing Rockefellers. Oh, okay. and, Rockefeller, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, and so you see, it's like, wow, these people stole a lot of artwork <laughs> from Africa a long time well, ago. Especially when we were looking at the Egyptian stuff. Yeah, like the Egyptian. It's like 400 years old and it's from Egypt and it's sitting in 
New York. Yeah, it's like the Louder <laughs> family do- donated this sarcophagus. <laughs> it's just like, right. how did in the 1920s, how did they even like, it, it, anyways, if you go to a museum, I highly recommend kind of like paying attention to who has donated the artwork to the museum because it's kind of just interesting. Yeah. yeah and then really look them cool. up and you'll be like, what? The, uh, the painting of uh, Washington crossing the Potomac is like probably. The Delaware, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. The Delaware is the highlight for me because I just didn't realize how big that painting was. It takes up the entire room, wall to wall, floor to ceiling. Yeah, and the story was the artist. I'm blanking on the artist's name right now, but he painted it and then his studio burnt down. So he had to repaint the entire thing again the next year. So I would definitely recommend going to the Met. I would recommend going to the Met over any museum in New York right now. Yeah, I mean, it was it was awesome. I mean, and even again, we spent so much time in Paris and we have hit a lot of museums in Paris. Um, and again, bang for your buck in time. I think the Met it gets you a lot more information quickly. For sure. I should say. So that night we went to Pestis, also a Keith McNally restaurant. Really, really good. No, but we went to Via Quadrano. First. Oh, that's right. We're After- forgetting our okay. favorite, favorite, favorite place. Okay, sorry. Well, Out let's of back all up. the places. So after the Met, so after the Met, we were like, oh, again, it was very rainy. So we were kind of just trying to hop around. So to stay out of the rain, it was torrential. We're staying on that. We were at this point on the Upper East Side. Um, and so we said, let's go try and grab a glass of wine somewhere. And I had saved this place for years on my Google Maps. And I have no idea why, when, or where I added this to the to the list because nowhere, we have nowhere else on the Upper East Side, just this one place that I added. Yeah. No idea why. We walk up. And there's a woman like ushering people into this restaurant like it's her her kitchen and she's, you know, the mom cooking all the food for everyone. And it was just so warm and welcoming. So she ushers us into this packed room, definitely not up to fire and safety code. There's there's absolutely no, no way. We are we, and <laughs> no. de- everyone was local. What they did during yeah. COVID, I have no idea because you would have kept COVID in like thirty seconds being in that place. Yeah. But warm, welcoming, friendly. The Dogs servers on the floor. There's dogs in the restaurant. I mean, there was a lot of codes being broken for sure. But yeah, the, and it's like the flying maybe I'm just gonna call her Mama Quadrano. Mama yeah. Quadrano. Yeah, she was she was running this place. Like I've never seen someone so efficient running the staff, running the kitchen, all checking on everyone. I mean, she probably checked on us 200 times. Yeah, along with the other 200 people packed into this shoebox. Um, and it was it was really good. So we had ordered a drink, but the we weren't even planning on eating there. No, but the food kept coming by, and it looked so like homey and good and warm and it was cold out gotta get the soup yep so we both got the soup best soup some of the best soup i've ever had for without a doubt i don't drink a lot of soup i i I have i eat soup do you eat a lot of soup so you eat soup you don't drink it well it depends what the soup's made of oh ours had like beans and vegetables in it so technically you are eating part of the soup okay while sipping the other parts Hmm. yeah amazing it was so amazing i love it go back there too yeah it was a special place it was it was a really special place the servers i mean they're just moving like lightning it was crazy um i guess i should mention we have um people ask us for recommendations a lot so we have prepared lists uh, that should Nikki we put can just... the link to our list yeah in the show maybe notes. we should we could just put the link to our list in the show notes uh and then to round out the that day we ended up at pastis which we've had on our list for a long time too yeah uh french brasserie as well another keith mcnally restaurant so good. Meat packing district. Um, I ordered the chicken paillard. Paillard. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like it the was thin awesome. pounded chicken. And, yeah. But it had this amazing um olive toppenade. It was like an olive toppenade. I, it was amazing. It was so tasty. With a salad. Yeah. Um, and French fries. We got French fries. Yep. And then you got the fly. I got the fly. But most importantly, we got a prime, prime, prime table. We did. We got a really good table. Yeah. They hooked Outside. us up. Right there in the meatpacking district. And we made a friend. And we made a friend uh, because he was a cyclist. He had his Chinelli cap on. Yeah. And he's a server there. Yeah. Or manager. I think he's a manager. He was walking around with the Chinelli cap. We stopped him. We said, hey, are you a cyclist? Long story short, we became friends, talked about Scotland, spent a lot of time riding in Scotland. uh, And at the end of the night, he brought us a free dessert, his favorite, an off-menu dessert. Yeah, off-menu. That he had made for us. Yeah, that's pretty special. I mean, the power of cycling. Yeah, it was really nice. Super cool. Uh, so we, we really hit the jackpot, I feel like, with this trip on food. Yeah. Because um, typically we'll have a few duds sprinkled in there. No, this this was all all winners. Yeah. And then we went to Cafe Mogador Sunday to meet Umi. And we've already talked about that, but meeting Umi and Megan. Yeah. Uh, but that's a restaurant that we've been to. Their other location in Brooklyn, 
now we've been to their Manhattan location, which is the original. It's Moroccan and it's awesome. So good. Yeah. Daniel, the owner, he was really cool. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, the owner hooked us up because we didn't have reservations. And Umi pulled his New York local strings, uh, which span very far and wide in Manhattan and Brooklyn. He knows I'm everybody. always impressed by it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess you, you're up there your whole life. You know everyone. Um, so thank you for getting us in without a reservation because it was actually packed. Uh, the food was <clears throat> phenomenal. Yeah. And then uh, I think to round out this episode, uh, you know, we've talked about Delta now three episodes in a row. It, it, you know, we might as well just finish the story with Delta. Very critical of them and their new policies. And so uh, they lost my bag. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a they coincidence? Lost bag. But I, th- yes, they, well, they didn't technically lose it. They searched, so we had all of our podcast equipment in your bag. Yeah. And I guess whenever, so we checked the bags because it was really heavy. So when we checked the bag, um, I guess they sent it through a scanner as they would do, I would assume, and saw the podcast equipment and decided they had to rummage through all of your bag. We didn't know this until well after the fact. but We didn't know this because until they this morning TSA when you opened your suitcase yeah. and there was a note in there saying we rummaged through your bag. So we spent an extra three hours at the airport last night uh, waiting on the bag. They finally gave up. Very nice. I will say very nice. And you said I was handling the lost bag very well. I was panicking. Uh, and so we left. And then I got a notification once we got all the way back to the car uh, that it was here. So I guess it was on the next flight. Uh, so we went back. Back to the... I, and I didn't even tell you. It was just by itself going around. <laughs> on the, the track by itself just so sad all by itself yeah so we got the bag but we were Delta I, got I was us back. panicking because our the microphones were in there which matter because they're nice but that's not as big of a deal but it was more the the device that we use to actually record we don't have multiple of those and so that was in there and yeah. if we lost that we wouldn't have even been able to record today because yep. we'd have to order a new one um, but we found it. And also a jacket that I bought for you for your birthday a couple years ago for Christmas. I don't remember. Last year, yeah. That was like one of a kind. And it took me a really long time to source it. Yeah. Was also in there. Yeah. And so I was very upset about that. Yeah. But we got back. They but just, it's all good. They just it. wanted us to know that they were listening. It was. It yeah. felt like they were like. Like you've been touched. So. Yeah. It was a little poke in the back. Just I'm over exactly. here still. Exactly. So. Papa sorry. Ed's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But and, we had But what was even weirder is when we were walking back in, the vice president of customer experience walked past us and, and looked she at looked us. right at me. Did you notice that? I'm she like, like literally are we paranoid? Oh no. She like literally looked right at me. Like I think we're getting paranoid now. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But we had a great experience at the um, The Newark Sky Club. Yeah, Newark Sky Club. Which I had spent a lot of time in yeah, weeks you're, prior. Yeah, you're local. I lived in there. Very nice people working there. And I said, I was like, it, it was the one thing that made the trip bearable was how nice the Sky Club was in Newark. Not not just like the, the facility is nice. Um, and the food is really, they actually have really good food there. But the this staff is so nice. They care. They go around, like they don't wait for you to go to the bar to get a drink. They go around, ask you like, oh, I noticed your wine is low or your Coca-Cola is low. Do you want more? Uh, the guy cleaning is like, I mean, you're barely even finished with your plate. And he's like, well, can I take that for you? Uh, because it was football Sunday. Um, they had the manager walking around with a couple other people passing out game day hors d'oeuvres, like past ne- hors Never in my life have I seen that. Past hors d'oeuvres, yeah. like it was a wedding. Yeah. It was great. But we saw why. It's because the manager was great. It's just like anything yeah. in, in corporate culture. It's a direct reflection of the most influential leader that people work for. The manager cared. And he cared a lot. Uh, and, and you know what made me sad about that is so after you get off the phone with Delta, if any of you have listened, they do the whole, can you stay on the line and answer one question survey? <clears> and the question is, if you owned a business, would you hire this person? Love or it. Something along those lines. Yeah, that is. And I was in that moment, I was like, man... I wish I could fill out the survey for the people here in the Sky Club. Yeah. Because I, would I wouldn't hire a lot of people at Delta, but I would hire these people. Sometimes we get emails of, like, what was your Sky Club experience like? Oh. So. Okay. All right. I'll let you know if we get that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it was it was pretty awesome. Yeah. All that was before they lost my back, for the record. Yes, yes, yes. We went a little bit out of order chronologically. Yeah. Uh, but it, all in all, it was a really great New York trip. Had a lot of fun. Got a lot done. Um, except for the recording of the podcast. Yeah. And really now we're back show. and we've been in, in meetings since 8 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Columbus Day is no holiday for us. That's for sure. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think uh, that's probably the episode for now. And, uh, you know, we do have more trips to New York planned because of this great client that we have up there. Uh, and, Going back in December. Yeah, we'll be back in December. We'll be back in actually in October, the end of this month for the 27th. Oh, are we going in person? Yeah. Um, so yeah, more to come. Maybe you can hook up with your bandit friends. I hope so. I, a lot of people are at the Chicago Marathon this week, which I don't know if anyone fo- – I, I don't want to act like I follow marathons at all because this is like a new thing. But I did see that the men's world record – marathon world record was broken yeah. this weekend. So that's pretty it was exciting. It was not our friend Kachobi. No. 30 seconds off of breaking two in a competition. Correct. Of course, Kachobi broke two outside of a competition. Outside of com- in Vienna, outside of competition. Yeah. So uh, our friend Brett, no doubt, uh, had something to do with this. Oh, I'm yeah. Sure. I'm sure he's it's a his Nike athlete. athlete. Yeah. Uh, I need to check with Brett and see. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty cool to see. And um, yeah, more really to come. Really cool. And, we, and there was like, I think it was like 90 from Brooklyn, but uh, like 50 people who traveled from Atlanta with the Atlanta Run Club um, to what? go race. So. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm getting like, I'm new into the run club thing, but it's pretty exciting. I think. I saw Haley Braun went. Oh yeah. Haley, yeah. Haley went. I'm sure she did amazing. She's super fast. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I love, I love the new run club thing. It feels like, just feels very exciting and inclusive and I, I really like it. I enjoy it. Um, I, I really <laughs> love cycling still. Cycling is just not as inclusive, not because the people aren't inclusive, but um, cause it's a really hard sport to get into. And so not just anyone can like get a pick up a bike and start riding with groups that's there's just a lot of obstacles whereas running it's there's a lot less barrier to entry so i, I like that aspect especially in atlanta yeah like it's a, i think it's a lot easier to to learn to ride in miami than it is here it's just this is a hard place yeah yeah the weather i mean same with new york like yeah. it's not an easy place to ride yeah but you're gonna be back out on the road this week you said i'm gonna try yeah mm-hmm. okay all right we'll Possibly. see okay so we got uh lots to follow up with on uh, next week's episode all right all episode right. 17 over and out all right